Let's welcome Elizabeth Campbell back as she chats about The Divorce Diary, her new book. So a few years ago, you went through some incredible changes in your life and you decided to write another book, completely different to your first book. Now, The Divorce Diary is quite an interesting book. So you say that you wrote this book because you couldn't find something like it. Yeah. So what was it that you were looking for? Tell us about the book. I just wanted anything that could take my pain away. I was in so much pain. I'd been in an not a very nice relationship for quite some time and I started writing my diary entries as a way of journaling you know as a way to just get clear on what I wanted my life to be like now that I'd made this massive decision to to leave the, the relationship and start out on my own again and it was the most painful thing that I have ever done in my life to date and Divorce is one of the five most stressful things that you can ever go through in your life. And we actually feel the same emotion as we would if we had found out we had a terminal illness or if Mm. we lost a loved one, even if we moved house, it's the same stress on the body. And Mm. I just remember sitting there in my parents' house. I had to move back in with my parents. I felt like such, felt like such a failure. I was 34 had to move in with mum and dad. I tried to do it for the first six months, but my brain was so foggy and there's so much stuff that you need to try to run a business. Mm. I'm trying to go through a divorce. I'm trying to get all the house and content sorted. I'm Mm. trying to go out and network. That book came out like at the six month mark of the divorce. And I was like, I don't even know how I got it out. I just must've gone into an autopilot. And I remember sitting in mum and dad's lounge room, just like staring out into Mm. the distance with just tears and every morning and dad would come in and be like, are you okay? I'm "I'm not okay and I don't know what to do. And so mum said to me, right, you've got two options that you can do. She's very good at this. You've got Mm. two options, Elizabeth. She said it very lovingly though. You need to go and see a doctor and go on medication because of your depression or you need to go and get some alternative therapies. So part of the alternative therapies that I did, I didn't want to go on antidepressants at that point. I hadn't read good things about them and Mm. I wanted to try everything else that I could possibly do before I went down that path. And journaling was one of the things that my counsellor gave me. So I started writing whenever I would get really stressed and just be inconsolable or wouldn't be able to breathe properly, I would just start writing. And it might have only been a couple of lines or it might have ended up being pages and pages and pages. And those entries are in the book. So you can feel the emotion. It took me a very long time to put that book out because it was so emotional to me. And I was like, all I wanted was something to take the pain away. And now I have this thing that can take the pain away for others, but I don't know if I can put it out there. I don't know if I can share that part of me because it was so painful. And it's still, I'm very, very happy now, but when I feel back into it, Mm. it was extremely excruciating for me as a woman, as a business owner, and just as an individual person trying to navigate this thing that I had no idea about. I have actually been in your shoes. And as I read this book, I thought, why hasn't anybody written something like this? And there's so many self-help books out there, all claiming to help you in one way or the other. But the way that you wrote this, I mean, it was quite incredible. It was almost like you were sitting next to me and you were holding my hand and every page was like, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. And when I got to the end, I actually felt so much better. I mean, what an incredible book. This has truly been an inspiration. It truly is exactly as it says, the modern businesswoman's survival guide. Yeah, there was not. There's books out there on divorce and uh, children, like what do you do with your kids and all of that. I was very lucky that I didn't have children to go through that same situation. But nothing for business 
mm-hmm. women or, or just people in business. Men could read this book too, but my target, my, usually I, I, I hang out with women. So guys would get the same results and they'd love it just as much and they have read it. But I think um, as a woman, there's just so much more that you need to have a handle on everything, you know, like, so there wasn't that book out there. And when I went, I remember I'm sitting with mum and it had been, so it's been four years since I ended the relationship. That book I wrote a good 18 months ago and it's only just come out now. So that's how long it took me to write those entries from the six month point in to get it to here and overcome still the grief that I had and the, you know, I didn't think that I was a very good person for what I had done to another human in leaving them is a very hard thing to do and it mm. destroys people. And, you know, the relationship, it, the, it was just over and you're just like, now, what do I do now? Who am I now? What am I, where do I go? Like, what do I do? How do I run a business when I'm thinking that I'm a failure and I, I don't even really want to be here anymore, you know? Like, I had really dark thoughts Mm. and a lot of that comes out in the book. A lot of it I cut out because it was probably a bit too dark. (laughs) A lot of it I cut out because I was, you know, still so angry at my ex-husband at that point. Um, And it's not a book that airs dirty laundry. It could very well have been, let me tell you, because I was so angry about it that, you know, angry at him and blaming him, but then... When I overcame that, angry at myself that I allowed, you know, the, the, my life to go that way. I allowed it to go on autopilot. I allowed people to treat me poorly. I had no, I allowed my self-esteem to become mm. nothing. What I loved about this book was that, as you said, it doesn't air the dirty laundry. It's such a fair book, but it's really focused on the inspiration. Like you give us inspiration, and you being the word stylist, a very successful businesswoman, you. and you're writing a book about how to survive this incredible, painful journey. That adds so much more status to this book because they say, if she can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. So it kind of like helps me to identify with you on a whole new level that you really understand. Mm. And that's what I love about the way you wrote this. And it's it's incredible. So thank you for writing such thank a powerful you. book. And I'm hoping that more people will um, actually read this and see that there is life after divorce yeah. and separation and how you can actually run a successful business yes. regardless of the pain. Yeah. And, um, and you're gonna be okay. That was the main thing. I had to come back to, um, when I worked with, I did a lot of work, a lot of work with coaches, mentors, counsellors, any alternative therapy I could find or think of, I did it to just try and get myself to a better place in my life. And every, I just kept coming back every time to, it's going to be okay you're going to be okay. I'd get up in the morning and be like, oh, I feel terrible. You're going to be okay. (laughs) So it is. And you do. The thing is, though, when you're in it, you don't feel like it's going to be okay Mm. because there's so many little things. But if you can take yourself out of just the little things and look to the bigger things, just be like, just imagine how you want your life to be. What is it that you want? And you can have all of it. And then you get to this point where you wake up one day and you go, yeah, I'm okay. And I've got all the stuff that I wanted. Now what can I do? Like, and when you come from that empowered state, that's when you can really start to grow and scale and change the way you do things or, Mm. you know, a new opportunity will come on board or you might get some media coverage or you might just find this new thing that you can do that you're like, yeah, this is going to help so many people. When you come from that place, that's where your success will really come in. So what is the next book? What is the word stylist going to create for us in the future? (laughs) I'm excited about the next book. I've started writing it. It's going to be the first five years in business. Because remember uh, I said to you that my aha moments were around the finances, the systems and processes and getting a mentor. I was pretty good with getting a mentor. I'm always, even in my career, I've loved that sort of stuff. I love learning. The other two areas fell down and I've only just started working on those in the last two years. So that's three years in business before I really cared about that. Mm. So what I'd like to do is go back and share all the mistakes and all of the, 
oh my gosh, just the things that have happened that you don't talk about, you know, like you don't talk, we don't talk about financial situations because we, we shouldn't talk about yeah. them, you know, the dogmas <laughs> that are attached to yes. them. We don't talk about how we grew the business because we want to be seen as an overnight success when really we've been working in the background for you know, my 16 year career in journalism has got me to this point. Mm. But people would see and go, oh cool, she just loves writing and does that. And so that's how she's become successful. But there's other things. So what I'm gonna do is take people on a five year journey and year one and what happens in year one. I'm gonna interview some really successful business people in that area. So if it's setting up the business, I wanna to talk to people who have set their businesses up from the very start mm. and shown the growth that they've had. Uh, and then I'm going to take them through my journey <laughs> and what I really should have done. And I probably would have had success or, you know, perceived success a lot quicker than I did. And but the catchy title? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The title for the divorce diary just came before I started writing the book because mm. I was writing a divorce diary. And I'd actually write, dear divorce diary, like <laughs> you would as a kid. Uh, it made me feel better. Wow words, it came after I wrote the book. I don't know. It has to be, it has to be good now though, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'll let you know. <laughs> You'll be the first to know. Well, that's it from us today. We hope that you've been totally inspired by Elizabeth Campbell. Her journey has been incredible and she has shared some incredible insights into her business and her two books. Catch you next time on CHTV.